Simplified Chaos, episode 155. Life is beautiful and full of chaos. And it can get slightly out of hand if that shit's not tamed. We're here to share how to simplify the little things to help you lead a more intentional life. This is Simplified Chaos. going on what's going on what's going on i'm jillian <laughs> one of your hosts welcome to simplify chaos ps and i'm with my husband and co-host nicholas i have no idea what's going on folks that was jilly doing a wild rendition opening we hope you all are having a great week we've got another great episode here for you today jilly what are we going to dive into Lately, what we've been consuming mindfully. So let's let's call it mindful consumption, maybe? Mindful consumption. So yes, we will dive more into that in just a few moments. Yeah. But before we do that, as always, we love to show a little gratitude before we get started. So Jilly, what are you grateful for this week? I am grateful for... Man... So many things. Well, it's been two weeks since we podcasted, and there's <laughs> just true. been so much good stuff happening. I'm I'm grateful for family and support. Um, we were in Maryland for a good while, and um, my dad has been in town from Arizona and kind of watching my sister's kids, and I was able to be his uh his partner in his like wingman. <laughs> I was his wingman. That's right. Wing woman, um, we were the the dad daughter duo for daycare, the DDD, and uh, my mom had. He a, was Maverick, and you were Ice Man. Why do I got it? Can it be Goose? Goose dies, honey. He dies. Spoiler brave. alert for talking. He Gun dies in a bold, you. brave way, right? No. Okay. <laughs> no, all right. I maybe I should rewatch Top Gun. Um, okay, uh, but no, it it was. Um, it was really cool giving my mom a much needed vacation, some time at the beach to relax, rejuvenate, reset, and kind of watching and playing with my niece and nephew. And it's been so good soaking them up and giggles and, you know, giving me that little baby fever, even though I really don't want a baby, but it's just nice being around a baby and, you know, being around family and my sister and, um, my, I was about to say my son-in-law, my <laughs> my brother-in-law. <laughs> Good movie, by wow. the way. Good well, movie. It is a great movie. Mm. Polly Shore. Oh, that's a that's a throwback, yeah. man. But I, I'm not re- I'm not ready to have a son-in-law quite yet. <laughs> Dear Lord, I hope not, not yet. Not yet. But it's just been a great week of just soaking in family and support, and you know we were able to to have some fun along the way for ourselves and. You know, we couldn't have done that without family to support us. You know, my cousin was able to, like, watch Lucille while we could go out and have a nice double date at a really yeah. swaggerly cocktail joint. And I can't say enough great things. It's just I'm grateful for family, support. You're looking for swanky? Maybe. I was trying to figure out what <laughs> swaggerly was. And I think the word you were looking for was swanky. Or bougie. I don't, I don't know. Bougie is definitely. Bougie, yeah. swanky. The Bluebird Cocktail Lounge in Hamden, Maryland, Baltimore. Hamden, Fan- Maryland, Baltimore. Hamden, part of Baltimore. It is. It's fantastic. Yeah, it was phenomenal. So, yeah, that that's in a nut. It was a saying turtle shell. <laughs> in a nutshell, I like turtle shell better. It's a little bigger. Jill's going through some things right now. <laughs> She's not really sure what's going on. Oh, uh, it's blissful chaos here. Yeah, it is. Yeah. What about you, babe? Is that why we're changing the name of the podcast? I mean... Blissful chaos. We're simplifying. Maybe, maybe one day. One day. <laughs> one day. We're still going to be simplified chaos from now on. We don't want to be BK. That's Burger King. Oh, well, the BK Lounge is long a distant <laughs> pass for me. No no more for the BK Lounge. Oh, man. Yes. When I think of lounge, I just think of people like smoking cigarettes and drinking. Yeah. And I, that's not what the BK Lounge is all about. I mean, no, it's it's definitely not. It's, it's about getting shitty food. <laughs> Can't go wrong with the Whopper, babe. Well, I don't, no. we haven't had a Whopper in a long time. No. <laughs> anyway, we digress. Yes. What are you grateful for, Nick? So I'm grateful for just the mobility that we've we've set ourselves up with here, and it seems like every time we do one of these trips, where you know I'm I'm still working, and and you know obviously going back to Maryland, that's where my 
my home office is technically. So I was able to go into the office for five days and some days I was there by myself. Other days I had some company and it was great. But, you know, every time we do it, you know, we travel somewhere and I'm working, whether it's going back to Maryland and working from the office, going to Delaware and working at my parents' house, out to Arizona, wherever, like it just gets easier every time we do it. And it's just kind of like second nature at this point. And, you know, that's, uh, again, I'm, I'm always grateful for the opportunity that this pandemic has given us and, and the, the opportunity to work remotely. I know not everybody has that that opportunity, um, but I am truly grateful to have it and do not take it for granted whatsoever. So, you know, I, I'm just glad that we're able to do this and, and hopefully show other people who might be in the same situation you know, working remotely that, Hey, you can, you can do it from anywhere. You can get up and move around and work wherever you need to work. That's the, all you need is an internet connection. So I'm just really grateful that we've been able to like get this down and be able to do those kinds of things. A lot of traveling. Yeah. More coming up here soon. I know. Yeah. It's awesome. All right. So we were, I guess, I don't want to say we were struggling to come up with a topic for this episode, but like, you know, we were just pondering and, you know, it's been a while and we've, we've, we've had some people ask us, you know, what things are we consuming? And, you know, we're looking at more of like along the lines of content because we have definitely changed. And I think the last time we did like an episode like that was like in the thirties where we were like kind of saying what podcast we were consuming at the time. And yeah. That was like over two years ago. So like times sure have changed and we have certainly changed our consumption. Some of it has stayed the same, but others have really uh, changed, especially recently with some of the lifestyle changes we've embarked on. But I think we wanted to like really share what we're finding value in right now. Yeah, I mean, I, I assume if you've lis- been listening recently, you, you may be able to like make assumptions on some of the content we've been consuming lately, but we thought we'd we kind of dive into specifics and kind of name specific podcasts, specific books. Um, maybe... There'll be a whole <laughs> lot of references in the show notes today. Yeah, and then I, I thought it'd be fun to share a little of the fun consumption. It's still mindful, but it's fun, like maybe... Um, I don't know, a little, mi- it's, I guess, mindful, but it's like mindful-ish, like some TV shows just for like, Ooh. you know, for those times we just want to like relax and not be thinking all the time, yeah. you know, like I know stillness is important, but also just to kind of like, oh, this is a funny distraction to make me laugh or just to have fun. So I thought it'd be fun to share that as well and hopefully maybe, um, provide a new resource maybe an upliftment in someone's life or maybe someone is like kind of been curious about that topic and we're just going to help streamline one resource because i know there's a bajillion resources out there that you could follow or find but we're gonna cut through that chaos and give you what we've been consuming and maybe you can hop on there and check it out or if not that's cool too so and we've so i guess we started off we've been on this really interesting journey lately and and really just trying to find better ways to I don't even want to say eat better but nourish you know, nourish ourselves better and and yeah. bolster our immune systems and whatnot so we went down this journey and it started at the the most extreme part of it I want to say or at least for me it did and I was really interested in the carnivore diet and I've just heard a lot of people who have just had tremendous benefits from that and and for for those of you that don't, don't know what the carnivore diet, like if you're a strict carnivore, it's basically meat, salt, and water. Like that, that is the diet. That is it. And, you know, when we talk meat, we talk about like the whole meat. So we're not just talking about like the the fatty pieces of meat. Like it is organs and, and all kinds of things, like basically nose to tail um, from, from that side of things. So that was extreme. Haven't gone to that extreme. And, and really, we've kind of fallen after doing some research into this area where we're doing kind of like a sapien it's kind of like a mix of keto sapien primal like there's there's a lot of different ancestral. names ancestral yeah. like there's a lot of different names for it but you know essentially it's 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 basically eating whole foods and things that are less processed and 
even if they are processed, it's processed in the right way. So like, there's a lot that we've learned, but how did we get to this journey? And, and a lot of it has been just going from those extremes and then pulling people in who kind of balance things out. So, you know, I think we're excited to share some of the resources that we've been listening to. And Jilly, please jump in if you want to talk a little bit more about the food journey before we dive into the resources. I just want to say that it's definitely not black and white. Just want to make that no. it's it's a lot of gray. We've been experimenting a lot to see what foods feel right for us, what don't. Sometimes there's foods that Nick feels really great with and I'm just like, yeah, I can't do that or I can't do as much. So um, just take this with a grain and salt, no pun intended. We've been having a lot of salt. Yeah. Um, but we've been kind of unlearning a lot of things we've been taught and relearning a lot of amazing content um, that clearly I believe should be the basis of all of our education because this is how like humans have evolved and it's really cool diving into the history. But so the podcast that we've been consuming a lot of lately has been Peak Human. Yes. Um, with Brian Sanders. Yes. He gets amazing guests and dives into a range of topics from from doctors to nutritionists to um people that are in what's the the latest guy the doctor he was in philant not philanthropy um and, um archaeology no is it archaeology or anthropology you're talking about bill Schindler? yeah yeah no he's he's an archaeologist but okay um He's he's very interesting because he's studied way back and his his archaeology revolves around eating. So like it's just really like understanding the different technologies as humans evolved that they used and you know how the the human body evolved from them, you know, we were plant based, you know, to to start off with, but then like there was this tremendous change when we were actually able when we as humans learned how to consume animal meats and you know at first it was like we were kind of like the vultures we were eating dead carcasses but then we evolved and learned how to hunt and then like really learn how to eat nose to tail and so it was just talk he, he's just so incredible um and this is just bill schindler um dr bill schindler from uh, the eastern shore what is it called the um he's at the university of washington we can put the episode yeah that we've consumed that have been really eye-opening and he's he's a dad as well and he's just i don't know he's just it's it's nice to hear from a parent to a parent like you know i think sometimes you can hear from certain people and it sounds like oh it's so rigid it's so like matter of factly but it's really cool hearing from him hearing the history of humans and kind of diving it is so we will definitely share um some of the great episodes we've been consuming on peak human but definitely check that out it's been kind of an eye-opener and just kind of reminder of like eating shouldn't be so complicated i think right. like the world today and large companies big corporations have really clouded our knowledge about what what we should be eating mm-hmm. and i know it's different for everybody but it's a great like back to basics on like man why am i struggling so hard to like feel good to 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 buy food you know so this kind of helps to me simplifies all of that and forces you to kind of experiment at home and um on the end with lucille i know like it may sound like yeah that's cool that you guys are doing it but how are you doing it with lucille so we have been experimenting with lucille and it's crazy once you start taking out some of like this the snacky quote-unquote kid foods and just kind of feeding her like food that all of us should be eating i think there's a lot of mix up with just like oh kid food and like adult food yeah yeah so it's human food we've definitely been experimenting with her and just like putting what we're eating in front of her in like smaller doses or mixing it up or like compartmentally compartmentalizing in it and if she doesn't eat it we'll leave it there and you know i'm like well if you get hungry later like you know there's no snacks but your you know your leftover dinner will be there and we've kind of tried this out to see how it would go and at first it was like you know, she may not eat it and you're thinking, oh, I'm a bad parent. Like my kid's going hungry. But actually like after the second or third try, like when she started to get hungry and realized there wasn't any like snack foods to snack on like late at night, she would go back to the meal that was mm-hmm. like the most nourishing, like the grass fed beef from the taco meat, or, um, we would have like a sausage spaghetti sauce or, um, anyway. So it's, it's so good to see 
that Lucille is going to more of the nourishing foods versus just like the distraction foods that I think yeah. as parents, we all know we have them. Like this is a good distraction in the car while I want some alone time or this. So it's really great to feel like I'm doing the best I can right now with trying to teach my kid, like, I don't know how to nourish your body versus like just, I don't know, fill it with fluff and then not feel as vibrant and mm-hmm. as good as she can. Yeah. And what this podcast has really done, the Peak Human podcast is really just help us understand that, you know, food is simple and it's, it's really helped us simplify our grocery shopping, our meal planning. Cooking is not as, as you know, you, we don't have to overthink it as far as what that goes. But yeah, like just the the guests that he have are incredible. They, you know, have tremendous backgrounds and, you know, speak things very clearly so that it's it's not a lot of technical jargon. It's things that, you know, it's very easy for the average person to understand. And, you know, we're just really excited that we found this one. And, you know, he's coming out with a documentary coming out soon called Food Lies, which I'm excited about. He's been working on it for quite some time and he's really trying to get it right. So, you know, once that comes out, I think that's going to be an an awesome documentary for for everybody to consume. So looking forward to that. Yeah. And I think it's um, also important to note that it's not just food. It's like it kind of encompasses like a lot of things about health, just like moving your body, getting Mm -hmm. out in sun, like kind of like the basics of how to take care of ourselves. So it's not just food based. It's just it's like all things that are in, involved nourishment for the body, the mind, you know? Um, so it's another podcast that I've been consuming lately because we're diving into homeschooling. I've been listening to the unschool space Ooh. and it's just been a great nourishment for my mind and diving into homeschooling and just like hearing pers- perspectives of other families. Cause there's so so, so many families that are homeschooling out there and that are just sharing their journey. And it's like, you know, it's, it's not, um, a linear path. It's just like, I love hearing about like what makes parents want to homeschool and like their journey on their kids and how different they are and the challenges that are presented and the opportunities it presents and just how to like you know, do what they think is best for their family. And I'm in awe at some of these stories and it just gives me confidence to kind of do what I think is best for Lucille and listen to her and kind of co-learn and, you know, I don't know, not, not teach, but really like be a guide and, um, I don't know, co-player along with (laughs) her as well. So that's been and um the host esther her voice is very very soothing and she has an english accent so it's it's really cool to just i don't know listen to her voice and then i've been able to connect with other parents through her podcast um to like chat with them more and we had a guest um recently on our podcast about um unschooling in particular which has been really it's been a really cool connector as well so if anyone is interested about that learning journey like definitely check out the unschool space yeah no that's an awesome one so another change that we've kind of made recently is we've been thinking about dental hygiene a little bit differently and you know we we've always been against the grain so to say i would think you know especially the last couple of years when it comes to like conventional wisdom or whatever and we're, we're trying to find better ways for things so one of the people that we, we actually kind of stumbled across on Instagram and, and has a podcast, which I've listened to a couple episodes, and they're just short bite-sized podcast episodes, but it like, gets you thinking differently about your teeth and, and, and your mouth and whatnot and how really like oral health is really tied to gut health, which I find just absolutely fascinating. But like the things that we understand about fluoride and stuff like that, there there's a lot of things that he kind of has a different take on it. So this one is called Ask the Dentist with Dr. Mark Burhaney. Uh, it's B-U-R-H-E-N-N-E. We'll put that in the, the show notes, but he goes by Dr. B. But he's just got a very interesting take on, on dentistry and, and the dentist field. And, you know, he's, he's actually come out with some, some studies a, a few years ago that are now starting to come to fruition now. And, and there are some changes within the, the dental and oral hygiene field. 
Um, but yeah, I'm just really curious. And so we've, we've actually changed up our oral routine, you know, as far as <laughs> I know it sounds interesting, oral routine. But we've, we've tried a more, it's, I wouldn't even say it's a more natural toothpaste, but it's high. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. It's There's like, something else in there and it's not fluoride. Yeah. It's hyd- hydroxypatite, I think is what it's called. But like we've done that and we've also been really into like tongue scraping, which we haven't been, used mouthwash yeah, in like over a month. Yeah. Um, I, we've always flossed. Flossing is a must. Yes. Um, We're I've always flossers. used a more natural floss. I'm not sure if you've switched yet to no, that. I'm, I'm still a floss pick person. <laughs> I just um, can't get the, my, my, my hands are too big. I don't know. I can't get them in there. <laughs> That's a good excuse, Nick. Um, anyway, no, like, and we've, we've both, I've had a tongue scraper for quite some time and, um, Nick just got one and we've been doing that versus mouthwash. Uh, and you know, Nick's noticed some changes and oh, I think yeah. it'll be fun just to see when we go back to the dentist, like what changes are in our oral health are. And we, I, it's, it always empowers me to know more about how connected our gut is with everything in the body. So it doesn't really surprise me that our gut health is immediately like it's directly correlated to our mouth health as well. So yeah. It does empower me when I go to the dentist and like if there is an issue, like I automatically think about, all right, like how can I change certain things with my gut biome or like am I getting enough probiotics or, you know, I I feel like I have the knowledge now that I can find resources or support to kind of help supplement that to like kind of make changes. So I'm not, I'm not just listening and doing what they say just by, you know, just taking their word for it. It's like, I feel more educated that I can dig further and just be more curious to see if that's the best route for me. So it's, it is great because we're going like every six months. So it is something that I want to be more knowledgeable about. Like I just found out about like what fillings are. Like, it's funny. I've had these (laughs) in my mouth for years and years, but no one's really ever explained like what fillings are, what the purpose of them are, how long they last. So it, it is really empowering to like learn more about what's been happening in my body and just instead just going with it and just taking for granted like oh they have my best interest at heart which you know people get into that field to do that because that's what they love but at the same time like how many patients do they have on their load like i think it's always important that we know what's best for us and do the digging to figure out like i don't know to learn more about it not to be an expert at it but just at least kind of dive a little bit deeper so we can ask questions and just truly know is this the best decision for me absolutely cool yeah no it's awesome so definitely check out ask the dentist podcast it's awesome yeah all right as far as i had some books oh um i've been reading at night and i've been rereading this is probably the third time i'm rereading the power of now by eckhart toll it's like a bible to me i i can't stress the um the impact this book has had on my life. And I don't think Nick's read it, but I would, you know, if Nick, if you ever want to read it. I've seen it lying around <laughs> and I meant to read it. And I think I will read it. I think this is the most like out of the spiritual. So I've been on a spiritual journey, yes, folks, has. of just like figuring out like, what do I believe in? Just the topic of religion, like revisiting like my days going to church. What did I value out of that? What impact did I have on my life? So I've been really diving deep just because now I'm thinking about like, all right, what do we want to instill in Lucille? What is the type of vocabulary we want? Like what kind of practices do we, we feel like are, would be important to share? So the power of now it's, it's a guide to spiritual enlightenment. I think it's the most lighthearted, easy to digest spiritual book out there. It's something that I can just like I've dog eared good gravy so many pages and underlined. It's pretty much every page she's dog eared. And like literally this page that I wrote on now, it says this book is my church, which it just shows like how simple this book is, but also complex too, because I feel like as humans, our mind complicates so much in life. And this book just kind of like picks it apart, decomposes it and like just makes you realize like how amazing life is and how we overcomplicate it with our thoughts, our fears, and kind of like a, an easy tool book on how to to pick that apart. And honestly, how to put it into words where like if we wanted to teach that to our kids, we could. That's how I kind of think of it now as I'm reading it with a daughter who's like speaking and understanding really well. It's like, all right, these are things and tactics and strategies that like I want to make sure that 
I'm voicing to Lucille. So she has the tools to kind of pick apart like parts of her mind that, you know, I don't know, and use big words like consciousness and being and yeah. not feel like it's scary anymore. It's it's like an, an our interpretation. So I'm getting better at <clears throat> figuring out what I do believe in and it's it's interesting. It's it's been a fun like revelation like just thinking about our childhood and kind of having discussions about church and I don't know. So uh, speaking of spiritual journey also there's another way more complicated book that I've been reading <laughs> that I it got is, from a new the friend. It is the size of the Bible. <laughs> it is called The Second Coming of Christ, The Resurrection of the Christ Within You, a revelatory commentary on the original teachings of Jesus. And it's by Paramahansa, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, y- Yogananda. And if you've ever read the autobiography of a yogi, it's this, the story is the same. The author is the the autobiography of the yogi like this is him and he's basically dissecting parts of the bible and saying what the verses truly mean versus how it was interpreted to us in mass forms in church structures so this has been like an eye opener for me and i find that i'm loving his interpretation way more than what I was taught because it's just way more universal. There's so much more love and openness in it. It's not so rigid and strict, but it is a very complex read. And I, I haven't read that much of it because I start reading it before I go to bed and I'm just like more excited than tired. Cause I'm like, <laughs> Oh my God, like I didn't think about that. Or, you know, I haven't read Bible verses in a long time. So this has been kind of eye opening for me. Um, but this book as I'm borrowing it from, um, a new friend I've read who's also in a spiritual journey. So it's been fun to go on journeys and then like connect with other people who are like on that same path. But those, those are the two books that I've been consuming. I'm I'm consuming two books as well. One reading, one audio book. The one I'm reading is the 12 rules for life by Jordan Peterson. And it's a really good book. He's kind of a controversial guy, but like when you when you read the book, he he like just kind of like helps you just be a better human, and you know be your better self. And it's just a really great book. It has some great lessons in there. And it, I've, I've read it like three or four years ago, and it seemed you just finished reading it not too long ago. You've been reading a lot more than I have, but you know I'm really excited to dive in. I just finished the first chapter, so. You know, I'm looking to and halfway through the second, so I'm, I'm trying to get a little bit more into that. But that's just an awesome book. I, I highly recommend that one. And then the other book that I'm reading, which you all might find interesting, probably not, but <laughs> it's a audio book um, by Michael Malice. He compiled a whole bunch of essays from some people, and it's called The Anarchist Handbook. <laughs> <laughs> and it's yeah it's an, a bunch of essays compiled from a bunch of people who um you know contributed to anarchy and not in the sense where there's chaos or anything like an- anarchy is actually a um, concept of 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 peace and 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 order believe it or not i know what we see and hear around a- anarchy is, is like you know nothing but chaos but i'm a firm believer that no human being should be ruled and even by the rule of government, but that's a whole different podcast. That's not even this one. <laughs> um, but I just find it fascinating and I'm, I'm really like interested in some of the, the, the thinking of the, the founding of like the, the country and like, you know, the essays span all the way back from like the 1700s. They go through like the civil war era and just all the way up to today. So it's just very interesting to see how they the, the different figures viewed government um you know during those different eras within the the US and even though you know we are the most free area free country on this earth you know there's there's always room to be more free um so i just find it fascinating i'm just really curious about that and diving more into it so yeah if you're interested in anarchy the beautiful concept of anarchy Give it a try. I'm excited to ask you more questions. I didn't know you were reading that. I'm listening to it. Well, consuming it. Yeah. It's almost like, and it's very cool. He got like a lot of different people to read different chapters uh, of the book. 
but like it's one of those ones where I almost like need to go back and actually like read it. Like I'm mm-hmm. I'm listening and consuming it, but I feel like I would get more value out of reading it than listening to it. So I'll probably end up buying it. So that happened to me when I I think I list I bought the longevity audiobook and I think I don't know if Cameron Diaz, I don't think Cameron Diaz, she's the author, but I don't think she was the one who was reading it. And it was such a complex, deep dive book that I listened to it on the way to work, but I was like, I didn't really retain it because I think I need to like hear it and see it and then highlight it and then go back and reread it. It's like, it was a lot. So I, especially when there's like old school language involved, Mm. you know, when you, when you're listening to things from like the 1700s and the 1800s, like, Oh yeah. It's, I feel like I need to slow down and, and think about what they're trying to say, even though you're hearing it, like it's still one of those things. It's just like, okay, what did he just say? And it, it, I just find it absolutely fascinating, but yeah, I, it's, it's awesome. I'll probably end up buying the, the regular one anyway because I want to highlight things and go back. There was one uh, essay that, that was being read that I was just absolutely fascinated by. And I was just like, I need to write this stuff down or at least have it at my disposal so I can see it again. So like I'm learning the the differences between like the audio books. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's so interesting to me, like podcasts to me are just so easy to consume just because there's there's usually two people, you know, and there's verbalization. But like Listening to an audiobook, except for it's Hardcore History by Dan Carlin, which isn't even a book. He's telling a story, which is awesome. But yeah, I, I, I need the actual physical thing. So I'm learning some things about myself. There you go. <laughs> well, I think there's different types of books that are easy to, to digest quickly in audio yeah. form. And then there's books yeah. where like, you probably want a hard copy because this is going to be... It's deep. Deep, yeah. yeah. Or old English. <laughs> All right, Jilly, what do you got next? Um, okay, so I, I, blah, I thought it'd be fun to just do, like, just mindful-ish. <laughs> uh, this isn't something that happens a lot, but there's times where I just kind of want to, like, distract myself for yeah. a little bit, you know, and just have some fun. And um, one of the shows that I've been kind of watching on TV Land, I've been re-watching, is called Younger and for anyone who's ever seen it or not seen it, it the storyline is this 40-something-year-old pretends to be 20-something-year-old just so she can get a job because she was a stay-at-home mom and no one hi- wants to hire her in the publishing world. So she fakes, she pretends to be a certain age and it's like her kind of like, I don't know, reliving her younger years and just learning more about herself. It's like she's reinventing herself and just having more fun and it's good. It's like really short like 22 minute episodes um a lot of beautiful people in there which makes it fun to watch yeah. and there's great little comedy quirkiness so it's been something like really light that you know if i just want to take a break and i don't want to like just be still or read um i'll i'll watch a little episode of that or two and it's been it's been nice to, to consume yeah for me like i haven't consumed too much television wise like I'll I'll watch some live podcasts every now and then, but television wise, hockey playoffs are coming up, so I would imagine I'll be diving into that as my Washington Capitals will be present in that. And they just kicked the crap out of the Philadelphia Flyers nine to two, so I'm I'm pretty happy about that. But there'll probably be a little bit of that. You know, I won't get too too crazy into that. Baseball season just started, so if if, if I can catch a game or two, I'll do that. The one show that I'm actually looking forward to that I will watch when it's coming out here will be the season or the series finale of Better Call Saul, mm. which is like the prequel of Breaking Bad. And it is it is fantastic. Just an amazing watch. So like that is my mindless watching thing that will be coming up here relatively soon. Nice. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for you Butt to fill sized. me in because I started watching it and then I stopped. So I'm going to be like, just Nick, just tell me what happened. <laughs> so, I mean, there's just too much. And it's been over. So, that's the other thing. Like, it's been over a course of like a long time. Like, there's been like two years mm. in between seasons. So, like, I feel like this goes back to like 2015, maybe, maybe even 14 when the first part of it came out. And I think the first season was only like six or eight episodes. And then they went to, you know, full length 12th season or 12 episode seasons so there's a lot that happened like i don't even know that i can like do it justice by trying to catch you up well i mean just tell me what happens at the end i mean i can do that (laughs) how it connects to breaking bad the last thing i saw yeah (laughs) maybe but um yeah 
cool. Yeah. So the nice thing about an episode like this is that's all the resources that we're going to be able to give you. Now I just have to remember what episodes and what podcasts to yeah, put on Yeah, here. so we've got a little homework to do before we get this thing out here. Jilly, did you find a quote of the day? I did. And Let's I, go ahead and do that. Okay. This quote is by Manuel Puig, and I was like, I wonder who this man is. He's an Argentinian author. He's not alive anymore, but I want to dive deeper because I really liked his quote because it resonates so well. All right. If it's great stuff, the people who consume it are nourished. It's a positive force. Hell yeah. Very good find there, Jilly. I did it in like I five kinda, minutes. I kind of want to find and learn a little bit more about this guy myself. Right? Yeah. That's what I like about like searching for quotes. It like makes you do a deep dive and like, whoever said that is wise. Now I want to know more about yeah. this wise person. But yeah, and then our... Take our... Action Challenge is if you find any of these resources interesting... Give them a give them a look. Yeah, and share the check them out. Share the love with other people. If you've yes. been mindfully consuming something that you have find that's been uplifting your life, like please, this podcast, <laughs> please share it with us. Share it to others. You know, spread spread the good stuff out there. Don't hide it in. I'd like to do more of these. It's a good reminder to just kind of share more specifics on, you know, what's been priming priming our lives so well and just to like spread that out in case yeah. anyone else wants to to seek it seek it out as well yeah no so we we appreciate that we would the people that we we are consuming would also appreciate that and you know if you like this episode and you like any of our episodes please share it spread it to a friend or write us a review on any of the apps that allow us to to write reviews i know itunes is really the one that i can think of off the top of my head but it really does help us reach a a larger audience when you write a review and, and share the episode with a friend and remember sharing sparks a conversation conversation leads to action and action is how we're able to live a happy and intentional as hell lifestyle we want to thank you all for listening and we will see you again next week see y'all later <laughs>